Welcome back to Cyboss TV. Now, custody and security services have been changing at an ever increasing speed as businesses focus on client needs and how digitization and new tech are key to meeting these demands. The industry, meanwhile, has been navigating major developments such as the transition to T plus one and shorter settlement cycles and the increasing use of distributed ledger technology and digital assets in security. Well, to discuss all of this and the evolution of custody and what's top of mind for clients, we're joined right now by Amit Gar Agrawal, Global Head of Custody Security Services at City. Welcome, Amit. We've got, so you are definitely a Cybus. Uh, veteran, as we've discussed. Uh, and, you know, we're a day and a half in, and it's really clear that the digital transformation is ongoing. What do you see, really, in terms of this transformation, how it's unfolding in the security services industry, and, and how are your clients responding? Yeah, first of all, uh, Angie and Johnny, thank you for having me. Uh, let me first start by giving a little perspective on the custody division within city to put things into context uh, we have built over the years organically a 63 country proprietary custody network that's uh, the first of its kind in the industry and it is through that network that we oversee over 26 trillion dollars of our clients asset under custody just take a breath to just uh, uh, put that into context it is against that backdrop mm -hmm. that we look at some of the key trends in the post-trade space. Namely, number one, there is a continuous rise in the pool of investable asset. And it's not just the growth in the asset. It is a shift in the mix of that asset from different segments to different geographies and different asset types. And given that we are in Asia, one of the trends that is quite pervasive in this part of the world is the rise of the middle class and therefore the increasing proportion of the retail investors in the post-trade space. While all at the same time, uh, like you mentioned, the settlement cycles are only shortening mm -hmm. and there is a continuous cost pressure on our client base. So our job as one of the leading custodians in the street is to help our clients navigate through this period of transformation and through this period of trans uh, transition, we are building the next generation of custody infrastructure, which will be fully cloud enabled, delivered through APIs, delivered through Swift, and delivered in a way that clients can ultimately help transition through this period and build a completely different digital operating model. Mm. As industry uh, pushes ever on through this transition, this modernization, many custodians are tackling legacy infrastructure and processes. Uh, just how important is platform modernization and how would it benefit the ecosystem at large? I think it's, uh, Johnny, one of the most important things that all of the custodians are grappling with, and especially for us, uh, being present in 63 countries, there's a lot of wear and tear in that infrastructure on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, earlier this year, under the leadership of our CEO, we brought our entire cash management and our security division under a services umbrella. And why did we do that? It was because we wanted to bring the power of one city to our clients, everything from our custody, as well as to our payments and our liquidity and our FX capability all in one. And the way we are powering that network is by investing in our platform modernization. So over the next four years, just within our services division, we are spending over $6 billion or roughly about $1.5 billion a year in platform modernization. And ultimately what we're trying to deliver through that investment is better client experience, better uh, operating model, reduction in manual touch point and overall reduction in the operating risk of our infrastructure, which ultimately benefits our client. Just specifically within the custody space, uh, we have just recently, uh, earlier this year, migrated our entire US custody infrastructure from a old legacy infrastructure of the 1960s to a modern 21st century infrastructure. That's the big lift and our clients are seeing the benefit of that. Similarly, we are over the next 18 months completely modernizing our corporate action infrastructure and we are collapsing our global custody and our local custody infrastructure into a single infrastructure clients will be the ultimate beneficiary of this modernization because they will see yeah. faster settlement cycle they will see better 
and faster event notification and election process. Well, you say faster settlement cycles and all of that. I mean, you, we talk about digital assets and DLT. That's that's the speed, right? Where are we on this journey, and how is it impacting the securities ecosystem as you see it, including financial market infrastructures? I think it. it you're right. It is definitely a journey, <clears throat> but I feel like that journey is entering a phase where it is accelerating. And I think it's very topical this year, given the uh, theme of Cyberverse is connecting the future of finance. So just parsing that phrase, the future of finance in many ways for the post-trade space mm -hmm. will be anchored on digital technologies and digital and blockchain-based uh, infrastructure. And connecting, connecting what? In my space, it is connecting the issuers and the investors mm -hmm. and bringing the technology to deliver that benefit. So from our standpoint, uh, we are quite bullish on the future, which will be based on a DLT-based uh, infrastructure. There are uh, two or three things that we are particularly looking at. One is uh, the primary market issuance of uh, digital securities. We're looking at uh, tokenization of both private market as well as the public market uh, securities. We're looking at digital wallets mm -hmm. as the node where these securities will be custodied in the future. And then last but not the least, we're also seeing the emergence of digital-only uh, FMIs or CSDs, and we are selectively working with some of those uh, experiments all around the world. A number of the discussions uh, at Cybos this year focused on post-trade innovation uh, infrastructure and harmonization. But the, with the US and markets in the Americas having completed the move to T plus one uh, this year, what's your view on shorter settlement cycles? And, uh, and is this going to be commonplace in the future, would you think? I think so, uh, Johnny. The, 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 the proverbial train has already left uh, the station. The direction of travel on the faster and shortening settlement cycle is a very secular one. US, as one of the largest uh, market moving has really set the tone for the rest of the world. Uh, in Asia, in fact, number of markets, China, we are here in Cybos, is already on T plus zero. Mm -hmm. uh, and India uh, is also moving to T plus zero settlement cycle uh, later this year. Uh, and in Europe, uh, UK is looking to move to uh, T plus one in a couple of years. And hopefully the European uh, will also move on to T plus one. So the benefit of the move to short set settlement cycle are going to be amplified mm. when all of the markets over the next few years move to this um, shorter settlement cycle. And if you think about it, both the cash and the security world are moving in the same direction. Cash already moves mm -hmm. uh, real time. It moves instantly, mm -hmm. right? We do not actually think about cash movement anywhere, any anymore in the context of mm -hmm. T plus two or T plus three, we take it for granted mm -hmm. that you should be able to make cash payment almost instantly. That's not the case with the securities, but the, the two are on a convergence path over the next few years. And this is also accelerated by technology, speaking of which, AI reaching an inflection point. And I'm curious, what potential do you see for it in the security space? A lot of potential, uh, clearly, in of, of AI in, in, in this space. Uh, there are a few areas that we are particularly passionate about uh, uh, to start with. We are looking at the uh, application of AI in our back office. What can we do to automate our processes? What can we do to reduce manual touch points? How can we improve the quality of our customer service? How can we reduce some of the operational inefficiencies? So I think that is one uh, bucket of areas where AI certainly has potential. Uh, another area is generative AI, which we are starting to now deploy in our software development. A lot of the uh, software that we are building and will build in the future is actually going to be generated by AI. And that is another area where um, we're looking to invest. Predictive uh, AI, where we are looking at, can the technology predict settlement fails, which is an important uh, area of friction in the post-trade space. And if you can predict a settlement fail, what can you do to preempt that and to prevent that? So that's another area. And then lastly, uh, given the rise of the retail investor in the post-trade space, uh, hyper-personalization yeah. is a very, very critical yeah. theme of, uh, of, of this space. So we are looking at selective use cases of where technology can be deployed for that. 
I mean, it's been uh, great to have you here on Cybos TV. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts and your time with us. We wish you all the very best over the next couple of days. Uh, that's Amit uh, Agawal, Global Head of Secure Custody and Security Services at City. Thanks again.